never intended to get into the business, and I certainly never thought I'd be playing wide earth. I mean, to me, uh, to be, to get paid to play cowboys and Indians, I think that's terrific. Hello, I'm Rob Word, president of CST Featureization here at CST Entertainment, one of the producers and the developer of Wyatt Earp Return to Tombstone. We hope you've enjoyed watching our presentation just as much as we had making it. This movie was both challenging and a lot of fun for us, and we thought you might be interested in seeing how we converted this classic black and white series into the two-hour featureization you just saw. First, let's meet some of the people who were instrumental in accomplishing this monumental task. Right next door is Mr. Jody Shapiro. He's president of CSC Entertainment and also one of the co-executive producers. Jody went to work immediately on negotiating for the film footage that we needed for this project. Say hi, Jody. After Jody informed us that all the necessary rights were clear, we then went to the next person here at CST to move our project forward, our other executive producer, Mr. Stan Rutledge. Hey, Rob, how you doing? Good, Stan. Stan evaluated the project and arranged for the necessary financial support it required. Now, let's take a look at the program that was the inspiration for our movie. On Tuesday, September 6th, 1955, on ABC, a tall, handsome young actor by the name of Hugh O'Brien rode into our homes. He maintained law and order each week as history's most famous marshal, Wyatt Earp. The TV series, The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp, would become legendary itself. Hugh O'Brien, a capable but relatively unknown actor, would soon become a heartthrob of women and the idol of many young men. The series was the first adult western ever to appear on television. The 226 black and white half hour episodes that were filmed followed Earp's career in chronological order taking him from town to town through the six years it appeared on ABC. The series highlighted his stints as Marshall in Kansas City, Wichita, Dodge City, and finally, Tombstone, Arizona, the town too tough to die. Recently on location, Hugh O'Brien took a few moments from a hectic filming schedule to reflect on his first visit to Tombstone and on his days as America's primetime hero. I came to this town of Tombstone 47 years ago, I guess, 45 years. In 1947, when I got out of the Marine Corps. My dad retired, and we came out uh, west. Uh, we we're going to go to California. I told him how great California was. My dad retired, and they decided they were going to try to maybe live out there. And we took the southern route, went through uh, El Paso because they had friends over there. And then on the way to Tucson, we came through a little town called Tombstone. And like any other 22-year-old uh, guy, I planted my feet in Boot Hill, looked around and in the, uh, the saloon and saw what, uh, you know, was history a long time ago. And you could have laid $50 million to one that I would be doing Wyatt Earp on TV uh, only uh, eight years later. I never intended to get into the business, and I certainly never thought I'd be playing Wyatt Earp. I mean, to me, uh, to, be, to get paid to play cowboys and Indians, I think that's terrific. You've seen what the shows looked like back then in black and white, but for our movie, that has all changed. Technology has advanced to such a degree that it now allows us to take a drab, lifeless, black and white picture and make it look like it was shot in color. In this room are some of the hundred people that were responsible for colorizing our wider film. Now let's meet Bill Schaefer, our art director, with whom we determined what the right look of the wider film would be. Bill. Let's take a minute to discuss how our process works. Well, basically what we do, Stan, is we select representative keyframes from throughout the movie to detail the colors of sets, props, and costumes. After those frames are built, then the project is ready to be animated. How many art stills does that represent, and how long does it take to do the art stills? Well, for a typical 90-minute feature, we have about 600 art stills. It takes about two or three weeks to do the pre-production. And once it's animated, it's ready to edit. Thanks for that demonstration. Now with that said, after screening all 226 episodes, carefully selected scenes were re-edited into flashbacks, and the process of colorization began to mold this television classic into an all-new two-hour special movie format known today as featureization. 
We weren't satisfied with merely colorizing episodes to bring back this Western classic. Quiet, please, quiet. And roll sound. We wanted to shoot new footage and continue Wyatt's story where it actually took place, Tombstone, Arizona. No other Wyatt Earp movie had ever been made in Tombstone. So, off we went to Tombstone to see if we could shoot our movie there. Our first visit was to look for the locations we knew we would be needing. Here are a couple of shots of us on home video while driving on some of Arizona's famous desert highways, looking for just the right location. Our first two trips also created the opportunity for us to begin a relationship with the people of Tombstone and the Film Commission of Arizona that would prove to be a formula for success. The authentic locations looked great. So, Wyatt Earp would return once again to Tombstone, this time arriving in 1914, 33 years after the famous gunfight. Not on horseback, but in a 1908 Ford touring car. We shot this all new footage in black and white that we later colorized to match our flashbacks. We shot it right on the very streets where Wyatt and his brothers made history over 100 years ago. This is the place where Virgil Morgan, Doc, and I faced off against the Glantons and the McClowers. <clears throat> There's a lot of sides to the man, and that's one of the reasons why uh, he is a, from out of the West, is one of the best known, if not the best known character. And he never intended to be a lawman either. You know, he was kind of shoved into that. He did a damn good job of it. Those were days when men were men and women were damn glad of it. You looking for trouble? I didn't see you, McClowry. You're a liar. You're wearing a gun, go for it. In addition to Hugh O'Brien reprising his role as the legendary lawman. Other celebrated Western actors joined us on location in Tombstone. Okay, guys, keep the face up. Here we go, here we go. And over to your right, just a touch more, Martin. That's it, and action. Hey, come on, catch him. You gotta move it a lot quicker than that, Zach. Martin Cove is perhaps best known for his role as Is Becky in Orion's hit television program, Cagney and Lacey. Marty has also appeared in such memorable movies as Rambo and all three of the Karate Kid films, and can be seen with Kevin Costner in Lawrence Kasdan's Wyatt Earp. Bruce Boxleitner, one of Hollywood's top leading men, began his career with a role on Gunsmoke, and later co-starred with James Arness on How the West Was Won. Box also had the lead in the TV movie I Married Wyatt Earp. He varied his career with movies like Tron and Babe, and by starring as the secret agent on The Scarecrow and Mrs. King. Dandy Don Meredith's natural wit and down-home personality made him fit in perfectly as proprietor of Tombstone's local saloon. Starting as a quarterback for the Dallas Cowboys, he made his television transition by hosting Monday Night Football, which earned him an Emmy. He has starred and co-starred in more than 20 productions. Long before he was wishbone on Rawhide with a young Clint Eastwood, Paul Brenniger was Jim Mad Dog Kelly on the series The Life and Legend of Wyatt Earp. Looks like a Texas boy. Looks worse than that to me. Texas cowhands water and feed their horse before they head to the bar. Reuniting Hugh and Paul brought a nice synergy between the original series and the new footage. Wyatt! Mr. Kelly, good to see you. Bo Hopkins is another true Western veteran. He made his feature film debut in Sam Peckinpah's classic, The Wild Bunch. He made three other films with the acclaimed director and starred on Dallas and with James Garner in The Rockford Files. Other Westerns include Culpepper Cattle Company and The Man Who Loved Cat Dancing. Bo won rave reviews in another Western, The Ballad of Little Joe. Son of old-time Western star Harry Carey, Harry Carey Jr., or Dobie as his friends like to call him, has a career that spans over 100 movies and TV shows, including Tombstone, with Kurt Russell as Wyatt Earp. By golly, Marshall Earp, is that you? He made several John Ford classics, including The Searchers, one of 11 films he made with John Wayne. You sure are a sight for sore eyes. <laughs> Yeah, you know, it's uh, my grandkids are are, uh, are uh, 
14 and 16, and they hadn't seen hardly any Westerns until they saw Tombstone. And now they want to see more Westerns. Alex Hyde White had his biggest impact as Ralph Bellamy's grandson and suitor to Julia Roberts in the hit film Pretty Woman. But he's done some action movies as well, including Indiana Jones and The Last Crusade. Mr. Cox? Alex Hi, uh, is the son of the late okay. Wilfred Hyde White, the British character actor famous for his role in My Fair Lady. His dad's picture graced the wall for Alex's scene in the tombstone epitaph. Up and coming young actor Jay Underwood comes to his first Western after having guest starred on the series Young Indiana Jones and Murder She Wrote. His breakthrough role was in the cult classic The Boy Who Could Fly. Now that we've had a chance to meet some of the stars who made this adventure possible, let's take a few moments and meet the producers who put all this together. Here's Joe Shields with Hugh O'Brien and Phil May. Both of them work at Associated Images. Phil and Joe were the producers who were responsible for the overall creative and technical completion of the project. Here's one for you. Let's take a look at this scene where Wyatt Earp drives up to the Tombstone Epitaph. Looks like Hugh O'Brien does a pretty good job of driving that Model T, right? Wrong. That's our coordinating producer, Mark Webb. When not doubling for Mr. O'Brien, Mark was responsible for the cinematic execution of all the new footage to be shot on location in Tombstone. Our director of photography was Jim Roberson. Jim has a terrific eye and previously shot the Wilderness Family movies and the westerns Winter Hawk and Grey Eagle. But Return to Tombstone was his first in black and white. And of course, here's yours truly. As you can see, every once in a while we got to relive our childhood memories. While well, we're taking this opportunity to see a not so serious side of our time in Tombstone, let's look at some of the other moments that didn't make the final cut. I'll bet he'll play it the way he and Doc Holliday did against the Clans all those years ago. Yeah, what do you mean? We're just getting in between and setting the Clanton bunch against Johnny Ringo's bunch against each other. Whatever the hell I did. Back then, old man Clant was the only one to keep the young guns and Tombstone in line. After he died, all <laughs> loose. Cut! That was perfect! That was great! <laughs> and here's Bo demonstrating his fast draw technique. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for a Miss Montgomery. Eddie Montgomery? 18... Oh. <laughs> Mr. Cox, hurry up, please. Here's a scene where one of the actors seems to have forgotten his cue. Make yourself at home. Thank you. Take your time, find what you need. As soon as Mr. Cox <coughs> arrives, I will be um, right back. Much obliged. Where the hell are you, Cox? Cut. Cut him. Cut. As you can see from this footage, our encounter with the people in the city of Tombstone was an overwhelming experience. The reception, assistance, and cooperation we received enabled us to accomplish more in a short period of time than would have normally been possible. We can't really say enough about the warmth and hospitality of everyone we met in Tombstone. Once the location shooting in Tombstone was finished, we headed back to Los Angeles and started editing the pieces together. Then we began preparing a much needed music score. Award-winning composer Dana Walden wanted to give our film a fresh soundtrack that was not only a tribute to the original series, but to a modern composer as well, Ennio Morricone, who had scored the classic spaghetti westerns with Clint Eastwood. With the help of associate producer Kate Edelman, whose father had created and produced the original black and white series, we contacted legendary singer Johnny Cash in Nashville to see if he was interested in re-recording the famous Harold Adams and Harry Warren theme song from the original series. Long live his fame, and long live his glory, and long may his story be told. We're really close friends with, uh, with the people who own the Wyatt Earp television series, the Edelmans, uh, Kate, Rosemary, and Rita Edelman, friends of theirs, and Kate Edelman asked me to consider singing the theme song for the Wyatt Earp TV movie. Of course, I'd heard the song, 
<laughs> and liked it and knew and felt I could do it, so I did it. Well, there you have it. As you can see, it took a lot of work from a lot of people, but it was also a lot of fun. We hope you enjoyed watching Wyatt Earp return to Tombstone as much as we did making it for you. And we'll look forward to seeing you again soon when we bring you the next CST Featureization. Forever, we'll live on the trail. Forever, we'll live on the trail.